Susie J. Silbert. I'm curator of post-war and contemporary glass at the Corning Museum of Glass. And today I am so thrilled to be here with you on behalf of Masterpiece Art Fair, talking about ceramics, which is um, a material that's near and dear to my heart and that I just don't get to talk about enough in my day to day. Um, and in particular, I'm talking about studio ceramics, um, 20th century ceramics, and in this case, the work of Ralph Becerra. His work en encapsulates so many things that um, I find to be just totally amazing about ceramics and, and about the period. He was born in 1938, he died in 2008, and in that period, that period of his life saw major changes in the way that artists approach the material of ceramics. And unlike uh, some other folks um, operating just before and at that time, like Bernard Leach with his love of the perfect little pot, um, the humble utilitarian every day, or Peter Volkes, who was there at the same, uh, working at the same time of him with his violent expressionist approach to the material, Becerra is doing something else. He is interested in beauty, and he even talks about uh, he talks about his work that he is interested in the pursuit of beauty. And if you look at his pieces, um, you will see this in incredible, luscious surface. And it's not just surface alone; it's surface and form. So. One piece that I think really stands out to me of his work is Portrait Vessel, and it's in the collection of LACMA in Los Angeles. And it's this incredible object, large scale head, and on top of the, on top of the head is another little head with these kind of uh, antennae out into the world. And I think you can do so much with that. I mean, first of all, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that it is still a vessel. So he's working in this sculptural way. People at the time in ceramics are working in a, in a sculptural way, but he is still thinking about um, the idea of the vessel. And then transformed into a head, he is thinking about the vessel and the brain as a container for ideas. And that's amplified if you look at the surface, which is covered all over with these complex designs. He's a master, a glaze master. And as a glass person, I am interested in people that are glaze masters because that's the glassiest part of ceramics. And in his surface, you know, you can see these checkerboards, these little dots. And, and, and even though he's not telling you exactly what his inspirations are, they are all there collapsed on the surface of this piece. So he's interested in, in people like M.C. Escher and the way that M.C. Escher is using mathematical concepts in his work and he's pushing and pulling the foreground and the background. And he is, if you, if you extrapolate from there on the surface of his piece, that is bringing all the kind of mathematical thoughts that you could have into the brain of, of this person. And all those little dots, Becerra is, is somebody that's looking at the ceramics and textile traditions of places all over the world. He's looking at Persia. He's looking at Japan. He's especially influenced by Japanese Imari ware, um, which is a kind of uh, ceramics that has um, many different patterns. But here he's taking it and he's putting it on the surface, collapsing all of these things together. Again, this like breadth of ideas. When you look at this piece, uh, especially in an image like this, it looks flat. And that's one of the incredible things that Becerra is doing. He is playing with our perception in the same way that M.C. Escher is playing with our perception in, in his patterns. Um, so this piece looks flat, but it's actually three-dimensional. And as you move around it, those patterns, the checkerboard, the dots, the arcs, um, shift. So as you're seeing it, um, your perception of it, of it changes. It is almost you know that it's a tangible object, it's right in front of you, but it is almost something that pushes your perception to question the reality um, uh, of what you see. And that, that is the incredible power of objects. Becerra himself doesn't think of himself as a postmodernist. He says, there's nothing like, there's no political, there's no political aim in my work. I am just thinking about beauty. But I think in the way that he's collapsing these different, um, different references into his piece. It's super postmodern and it's kind of proto-internet. I look at this thing and I see like all the crazy zeros and ones that we're putting into our mind every day as we're surfing the internet. It's like uh, Pinterest and Instagram all collapsed together. And it's something that he, as a Filipino American, um, also is bringing in many references into what he's doing. So for me, this piece is really, this, this piece and Ralph Becerra's practice and thinking about ceramics at that time and the way that ceramicists are liberated to bring in references from all over, are able to have mastery, I think, 
I think, let's bring it back to the material. One of the most impressive things about Becerra overall is that he, he is doing things with glaze and with glaze chemistry that modern day ceramicists, when they look at it, they still don't know. It is like Palissy and, and like other ceramicists, a real mastery of material he is making knowledge as he's working.